Good evening. Many people in this room had the opportunity to interact with Jane Evans during her 96 years of life. I use the word opportunity very intentionally because interacting with Jane Evans provided a chance to learn, to be inspired, to be motivated, and to know what it's like to be in the presence of greatness. Whether you knew Jane or not, all of us here are the beneficiaries of her many contributions to Women of Reform Judaism, the Union for Reform Judaism, and the Reform Movement as a whole. Jane served this movement for more than 70 years, 43 of them as the executive director of what was then the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods and is now Women of Reform Judaism. Jane Evans was a woman of countless pursuits and accomplishments, from mathematics to aeronautics and from labor law to music. At the age of 20, she, painted, she patented a design for an electric fan blade that is still the industry standard. And at the age of 80, springing from her deep love of Israel, she studied Hebrew. And at the age of 94, she was still piloting her boat and driving her car daily to the URJ offices in Manhattan. Although I will admit that fewer and fewer people were willing to be her passenger at that time. <laughs> but the thrust of Jane's life was her passionate pursuit of justice. She was a founder of the Jewish Peace Fellowship. She and the collective woman power of sisterhoods helped to rescue European rabbinic students in the 1930s. Jane, yes it is. Jane believed so profoundly in world peace that she took a leave of absence to join the U.S. delegation in the formation of the United Nations, and she helped draft the preamble to the U.N. Charter. Under Jane's leadership, National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods, now WRJ, supported the creation of the World Union, and our partnership continues to this day. We also became the founding patron of the Jewish Braille Institute, today known as JBI International. Justice, justice shall you pursue. And justice, justice did Jane pursue. We, the women of Reform Judaism, are Jane's greatest legacy because we live the values that she taught us. Jane passed away in 2004, and that year WRJ established an award in her honor that recognized other individuals for their achievements in the pursuit of justice. It is in that spirit, in Jane Evans' spirit, that we, Women of Reform Judaism, present the 2013 Jane Evans Pursuit of Justice Award to a most deserving recipient, Anat Hoffman. In every aspect of her life and career, Anat Hoffman is incredibly deserving of this award. She is a humanitarian whose life and work exemplify the values and ideals that Jane cherished particularly an immense respect for the dignity of every human being. In the Talmud, Kiddushim 29a, we learn that parents are obligated to teach their children three things, Torah, a worthy occupation, and how to swim. In all three of those areas, Anat Hoffman has gone me'al u'me'ever, above and beyond. Her drive and success as a swimmer won her local and regional medals. In 1972, Anat made Israel's Olympic swim team, giving both herself and the state of Israel a taste of what her perseverance could achieve. Anat took her drive to the floor of the Jerusalem City Council, where she served for 14 years as a warrior for justice and equality. 
As a woman who despised monopolies, she made sure for the first time that cell phone bills were itemized and that one company could not dominate the industry. Anat fought for adequate municipal services to be provided equally for all Jerusalem citizens, both Jewish and non-Jewish. Breastfeeding during city council meetings, Anat was a role model for thousands of working mothers. But most importantly, Anat launched Israel's first ever investigation into salary discrepancies between male and female municipal workers and discovered that women, on average, earned 46% less than their male colleagues. She fought for equal pay and made sure that a woman could make a living in her occupation of choice. Anat's love of Torah and her dedication and desire for religious pluralism brought her to the Reform Movement's Israel Religious Action Center in 2002. From this perch, Anat has become a leading voice in Israel, bringing the values and virtues of our movement into the national dialogue. She has been a tireless advocate, not only for progressive Jews, but also for Israel's minority groups, from gypsies to Bedouins, foreign workers to African asylum seekers, immigrants to Arab citizens. And of course, Anat is a relentless advocate for women. Believing that women should be seen and heard, Anat was among the founders of Women of the Wall. As their chairwoman, she is a persuasive campaigner who believes that the Kotel should be open to all, Jew and non-Jew, men and women, and especially to women who wish to pray in that holy space with a Talit and Sefer Torah. Like the Olympians of old, Anat represents the best of humanity. The torch she carries sheds light into an all too dark world and lights a path for all of us. It is a path that leads to justice, compassion, and tikkun olam, a better world. Just as Anat received the torch from those who came before her, her work serves as a beacon to those of us who would follow. Her unyielding demand that all of God's creation be treated with dignity and respect, her devotion to the Jewish people, her love of Israel and progressive Judaism, and her tireless dedication to improving our world make Anat most deserving of WRJ's Jane Evans Pursuit of Justice Award. My name is Noah Satat. I'm the director of the Israel Religious Action Center, and I get to work with Anat every day. I have good news for the lovers of irony. Anat lost her voice. <laughs> Despite all the remedies and chicken soup suggested by many in this conference, she cannot speak. Here are some words she asked me to share. Here's a useful tip from her. If you're destined to lose your voice, sometimes in the course of a 25-year struggle for equality, don't lose it in the Knesset. Don't lose it in a prison cell. Don't lose it in the Supreme Court. Lose it when you're approaching victory. Lose it in, at the 20, 2013 URJ Biennial in San Diego. <laughs> After flying all over the US, hugging and kissing so many people, a virus succeeded in silencing me tonight. But what a divine coincidence to teach me and all of us. I can be silenced 
but everyone here can speak for me. Everyone here. Everyone here knows there's more than one way to be Jewish. No one here is willing to be ignored on this point in Israel. None of us are willing to give up on the vision of Israel's declaration of independence as a state that ensures complete equality of social and political rights, irrespective of religion, race, or sex. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be a pretty hairdo tonight. Goodness knows you've heard me plenty. The video you just saw showed you the highlights of the struggle for equality at the Western Wall. Now we are a part of a team that is making history, together with Rabbi Rick Jacobs, my brother, whose reason, passion, and courage make all of Israel's cabinet ministers look up to him. <laughs> and my colleague and friend, Rabbi Gilad Kariv, head of the reform movement in Israel. <laughs> Blessed by both profound ideology and superb analytical skills, who is leading the reform movement to a new era in religious life in Israel. Together, we are negotiating a new reality for all of us at the, at the wall. This is not going to be a slightly cleaned up, second rate area for the misfits. It will be the first time that the Israeli government will offer everyone a real choice at the Kotel. I know Israelis are going to get used to the flavor of choice, and they are going to demand freedom of choice in all other areas of religious life, such as marriage, divorce, conversion, and education. One Once you have 31 flavors, you can't go back. <laughs> For too long, the face and character of Judaism's holiest site has been in the image of one extreme minority. But we are changing that. It is time that Israelis got to know some other faces of Judaism. That of our very own Rabbi Miri Gold. or that of Ariela Finkelstein, our, four, our orthodox 14-year-old client who personally sued the, the bus driver who told her to go to the back of the bus in Beit Shemesh. <laughs> we must plant our values the same way we have planted trees. This will require all of us to get our hands dirty, since there is no other way to plant. Our success at the Kotel must become the engine, pulling the train of religious pluralism. The, the next car is an end to gender segregation in Israel and the exclusion of women. We bring you news of great achievements tonight, but we also know that the rights of women in Israel are under attack, and it is unto us to provide the response. Other cars in the train are freedom of choice in marriage, in conversion, the full equality and recognition of our rabbis and institutions. I am standing on the shoulders of our incredible institutions and partners, on the generosity of IREC supporters over the year. I am standing on the shoulders of men and women who care about Israel, about Judaism, and about equality. I felt this throughout the biennial. Many asked me, what can we do? First, you have to make a decision. Are you going to wring your hands about Israel, or are you going to roll up your sleeves and get to work? You can't do both at the same time. Let's roll up our sleeves. I'm asking you to do four things. First, visit Israel, and make your visits count. Make time for the Israel Religious Action Center. Fewer Roman ruins and more freedom rides. Read, at least once a week, read something about Israel which is not about security. Use your financial support to create an Israel that reflects your values. And last and most important, refuse. Refuse to choose between your liberal values and your commitment to Israel. Let you, your frustration motivate you to action. And for us at the Religion Act, Religious Action Center, 
Action is our middle name. I want to thank the WRJ, laid by the remarkable WRJ director, Rabbi Marla Feldman, for their years of friendship, support, and solidarity. I am grateful to Lynn Magid Lazar and the entire WRJ board and look forward to working closely with Blair Marks as she assumes her new position. I am honored to accept this award with the full awareness that I could not have been here if not for the support of so many. I am literally speechless from, <laughs> from all the love you have, shown, you have shown me during this amazing biennial. Thank <laughs> you.